often get to brag on Dr. Falkenberg, and I think he's pretty spectacular. So he's got to stand back there tonight and listen to me, okay? Um, Dr. Falkenberg has been practicing ophthalmology in Fredericksburg since 1996. He is magna cum laude, graduate of Rensselaer Polytech Polytechnic Institute with a Bachelor of Science. In 1987, he received his doctorate in medicine from Jefferson Medi Medical College in Philadelphia, and he was cum laude there. He completed his residency in ophthalmology at the University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey, where he also serves as chief resident. He's a super achiever. He's board certified in ophthalmology. He is a member of the American College of Physicians, the American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery, and a diplomat of the American Board of Ophthalmology. He also, the Consumer Research Council of America, elected him one of America's top ophthalmologists in cataract and refractive surgery in 24-25. Dr. Falkenberg. I'll look over my shoulder and say, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming and sharing an evening with us. Um, as you know, we're talking about LASIK, um, laser vision correction. Um, and we want to kind of go through a few things here to, to give you somewhat of an idea of what that means. Um, you know, is, is eye LASIK or any form of laser vision correction something that's right for you? Um, it's a great alternative for people who don't want to wear glasses. Um, it, you know, has, has a very broad range of, of correctability. We can treat nearsightedness, astigmatism, farsightedness. Um, we don't yet have the ability to give you, for pe people who are presbyopic, where you've reached the point in your life where you have to wear reading glasses. Um, we don't necessarily have the ability to make you the same eye see distance and close with LASIK, but we have other ways that we can achieve that. So you know, in terms of being a candidate for LASIK, um, obviously you need to have some correction, nearsighted, farsighted astigmatism. Um, you're at least 18 years of age. We look at people at age 18. Um, what we're looking for really is are, are your numbers stable? Has your prescription remained the same for a reasonable amount of time? Um, obviously, you have healthy eyes. Um, there are definitely contraindications to it, but there aren't very many. So, you know, in our screening process and exam process, um, it's not very common that we find somebody who's not a good candidate for this. Um, <clears throat> You know, why do it this way? Um, there are some different technologies out there that can correct your vision. Um, the LASIK procedure is basically comprised of two parts. Um, we make a flap that is partial thickness in the cornea, and then we lift the flap and underneath do a correction to correct the prescription. Um, with the, the technology that we use, um, we're able to measure your eyes uh, in a custom fashion. So we're, we're using technology that not only looks at what's your prescription, but it also looks at other abnormalities in your visual system that can impact how you see. Um, and we use that data to actually perform the correction. So the correction is driven off of data that's unique to every eye. <clears throat> Go ahead. And that, in, in most instances, will give a better correction than you might achieve with glasses or contacts. Um, quick rundown of what all these things mean in terms of how you see. Um, normally, light enters the eye through the front of the eye, is focused between the cornea and the lens, and focuses on the back of the eye. Someone with zero prescription, it's focused sharply on the retina. That creates a, a clear image. <clears throat> so <clears throat> patients with normal vision where it focuses on the back of the eye, as this depiction shows, the light focuses, you see clearly. Um, in someone who's nearsighted, the eye is effectively too strong. So the focal point is in front of the retina. So you see things up close relatively clearly, but things further away are not clear. People who are farsighted um, have a relative weakness of the focusing. So generally things at distance are 
clearer than things up close, but if you're enough farsighted, you don't see well anywhere. And people with astigmatism, um, there are more than one distinct points of focus, which creates a blur or sometimes a doubleness to the vision everywhere. Um, so then, you know, what exactly are we doing when we do eye lasik? Um, as I said before, the components of the procedure are to make a flap and then to do a correction. Um, years ago when we did it, um, the only technology that was available to make the flap was to use a, a mechanical instrument that had a blade. And, you know, they were fairly advanced, but, you know, still it was a blade and it was cutting a flap in your cornea and there were definitely risks to doing that. Um, and there were very real complications that you know, could impact people quite significantly. Um, probably about, I want to say 10, 12 years ago, um, we moved to creating flaps with lasers. Um, and the biggest advantage of doing that was that the risk profile was dramatically diminished because the lasers are not actually cutting uh, what they're doing is they're delivering energy to a specific depth in the cornea and that creates a little bubble that sort of separates the tissue. Um, and when you do, when you make a flap with an intralase, um, you have much better control over what you're doing. You can basically enter in any diameter, any thickness, um, you can change where the hinge of the flap is, how big it is. So we have a lot better control over what we're doing. Um, but more importantly than that, the likelihood from a risk perspective that it would create a significant issue is pretty close to zero. Um, if something happens with this, worst case scenario, we stop, everything kind of resorbs and goes back to where it was and we can come back another day. Um, so you know, what we're doing with this, we're measuring your eye, as I said before, we use technology that measures um, unique imperfections in a given eye. Um, and that data is used to drive the correction after we make the flap. Good. Um, and then kind of the depiction of the laser and the correction. Good. So, you know, what's what are the expectations? going through the process. Um, we do a very comprehensive exam, so we're not only looking at your prescription and the, and the, uh, the data from the, um, the wave scan, um, we're also looking at detailed information about your cornea, we're looking at the rest of your eyes to make sure that everything else is healthy, that there's anything else going on that would impact our expectations or, or risk of doing the surgery. Um, <clears throat> It's important that if you're in contacts that you come out of them for a period of time prior to, to doing the evaluation. The reason being is that the cornea can have some impact on the shape, or the contact can have some impact on the shape of the cornea, which obviously would affect the measurements and ultimately would affect the outcome of the surgery, so that's not a good idea. So we do have people to come out of them for a period, usually a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, drops in your eye. That is, is sufficient. People typically don't feel anything. Um, we do give you some value. So if it relax you a little bit beforehand, uh, most people accept that. Some people don't. Uh, that's your choice individually. Um, when we make the flat with the laser, sometimes people feel a little pressure. Um, most people don't feel anything. Um, so that's the only part really where you might feel something. <clears throat> and then once we make the flaps, the way I do it is I usually make the flaps in both eyes first, um, and then we move to the corrective laser. Um, typically the correction it depends somewhat on your prescription, how long that takes, but in terms of time, to make the flap is 20 seconds. Um, to do the correction part varies anywhere from maybe 10 seconds to a minute. So the actual laser times are very quick. Um, so the, the correction laser, um, as uh, Sam said, it has a red flashing light, has a target fixation light, but the, that laser also has a tracker where once we get you aligned underneath, um, it actually locks onto your iris and your pupil, 
So if you move a little, it adjusts the treatment to follow you. If you move beyond a certain distance, it shuts the laser off. So, you know, it's, I'm not going to say foolproof, but, you know, there's a lot of safeties built into this that make this very accurate um, to allow us to get a really good outcome with it. Um, and then use it both eyes are treated. Um, after the procedure, we send you home with sunglasses. Um, we tell you to go home and take a nap. Um, you do get some protective like goggles that we ask you to sleep in for the first week just to kind of protect things. Um, typically, after a few hours the day of surgery, your eyes are comfortable. Um, most people, the vision is, is significantly improved by later that day. Um, certainly by the next day, just about everybody can drive themselves here for the follow-up appointment and generally go about their business. So the vision recovery is typically very quick. Um, you can have some fluctuation in the early stages. Um, usually it's not dramatic. And typically we'll see you the next day, we'll see you again about three weeks, um, three to four months. Usually by three to four months things are pretty stable. Um, and then we'll see you nine months to a year just to be sure. And that's it. That's a good question because the, um, the technologies as they've improved have had impact on that. So um, it's a combination of doing custom corrections and the, the creation of the flap. Um, there's definitely, when you compare making a flap with a laser to making a flap with a blade, um, there's differences in what that creates and how that affects you visually. Um, so that does have impact on the likelihood of having those side effects. The other part of it is the, the whole custom thing. Because when we're doing custom corrections, we're actually measuring the entities in your eye that create those type of effects, we're able to incorporate that into the treatment and that diminishes the likelihood of having that. So it relates in great part to exactly what the correction is. And for some people, you know, we always talk about how it is you use your eyes and, and what kind of environments you're in. And depending on what the data looks like and what your eyes look like and how you use your eyes, you know, we may tell patients, maybe this isn't a good idea. Um, or at least expect that this is going to be the case. LED lights are tough. Um, and you know, no matter what technologies we have, they definitely can create some effect. It's going to be based on wavefront data, which is what we measure with the wave scan. And there's always continuing um, improvements in that technology. Um, so our ability to measure that today versus even five years ago is much better. So in, in turn, the ability to, to transform that into a correction is better. So there's not, I mean, I'm not aware of any earth shattering thing that's on the horizon that's going to make huge difference in that realm, but right. we are always getting updates to that technology. Right. When we make the flap, there's a ring that goes on your eye that kind of holds your lids open, so that helps there. Um, when we do the correction part, we have an instrument that actually holds your lids open. So, you know, I've, I've had some challenges over the years, for sure. Um, I've not had anybody I couldn't do this on. 